in a word of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, Lord, we thank you and praise you, our Almighty God, for this day. We thank you and glorify your holy name in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, we praise you for the day. Lord, I pray for the pastor. Lord, I pray for myself as I preach. You may fill me with the Holy Spirit. You may fill everyone here with your Holy Ghost mm-hmm. and help us to learn your Holy Word. We may know the truth. We may, know, we may grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name, Lord and Savior, do we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so, um, uh, obviously, we're still going to do going through James. And we're in the book of James, and of course, the last verse was verse 10 last week. So we are in verse 11, and James chapter 5, verse 11. Uh, but from reading from verse 10, it says, Take my brethren prophets, who have spoken the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. And then they become this morning, Behold, we count them happy, which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job, have seen the end of the Lord. The Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. <clears throat> In the book of Psalms, verse 35, it says, For his anger endureth for but a moment. In his favour is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. <clears throat> Behold, we count them happy which endure. Jesus said that he wants us to endure unto the end, that we're fighting the good fight, that we're running the race. And the Christian walk is not just sit on the sidelines and do nothing. You don't get saved and then just go and sit in the pew and that's all you do for the rest of your life. The, the Christian life is, is a, a fight. It's you're, you're fighting the whole time. There's a fight between the spirit and the flesh, between the world and the devil. You know, it's between. It, there's all these things. There's a fights happening. You're running the good. You're fighting the good fight of faith. Mm. You're running the race. Do you run a race? Do you start the race to lose? No, you start the race to win. Right. <clears throat> and then in today's society, there's a lot of things about you know. The equal have these achievement awards, like you know, you do achievement award. But God wants us to run the race to our best ability. He wants us to get out there and run that race and take the time and be there too. And like a running a race, you need to endure. We need to have endurance, like a marathon person has endurance, but they don't just. So then you just get up and start. I couldn't get up now and go for a run and run a race. I've got a chest infection and I would be coughing and spluttering by the time I got to that bus stop up there. What's the bus stop? <laughs> yeah, just up there. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would be coughing and like, you know, but an athlete has to train. Yeah. And the same with a Christian who wants to follow the Lord and run the good fight the good fight of faith and run the race, you need to be in the Word of God. You need to be in the Word of God. This is your training ground. Amen. The King James Bible is the training ground for those who believe in the Word of God. You need to be in prayer. Prayer is very important as well. We need to be in prayer. And we train ourselves, the same as the athlete does, he trains himself or her, he or them, whoever they are. They train themselves and they take the time, little by little, they do little bits of things and they run a bit further. They run and they set goals and they set goals and they keep doing that until they get to the point where they can run that endurance race. So the same thing, if we liken these things, that's what they're liking in here, because God gives us things here that we can understand so we understand how to do that in a on the preaching sense of those things. You no, know? he gives us the things here that's even as Jesus said, you know, you, you run the race. You fight the good fight of faith. But hold we count them happy which endure. And and if you sometimes there's hardships in life as well. And still we go through things. 
But if you endure through it, at the end, there's you know, a crown of life. You know, there's, God has got so many crowns. If you can go through the trials and tribulations and you make it to the end, He is of tender mercy, very pitiful, and loves you so much that He gives you more. And we will see that. He's, he's done that to many people in the Word of God. <clears throat> he's... In 2 Thessalonians, verse 1 and 4, it says, So that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all persecutions, tribulations that ye endure. So that we ourselves glory in you. So we should glory in one of those tribulations. What it's saying here. We take that time. I'll take my bulbs pulling apart. Glory in those tribulations here. We want to glory in those things in time. This is. Now, as I said beforehand, it's a fight, it's a race. And you are soldiers of Jesus Christ. You are a soldier fighting the fight. It is a war. And you're fighting against principalities and powers and wickedness and darkness and high places. We are not fighting against each other in the flesh. As in, like, I don't know, if I have a disgruntled... The, the Bob's the point. If I have a grudge against my brother, I need to go make it right. right. I need to say, I love it. And then we make it right and we come together. We forgive each other and we move on. It says, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, even as God, for Christ's sake, so loved you. That we gave you, that's right. And he says, Jesus said, be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. So what does that mean? Well, that means even my enemies I need to be kind to. And show them the love of God. Because God, who is our Father, he sends the rain upon the just and the unjust. Sure. He, sends the, he gives food to the thankful and to the unthankful. And he says, be ye perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And that's not really easy. It's like, oh, I can say that. Oh, be ye perfect, Father in heaven is perfect. But it's a lot harder to do. Right, right. Yeah. Think of the person you hate the most in your life. And if you're told that you have to be friendly to them and front your face without having a strong grudgment against them, could you do it? It's a good question. Could you do that to someone that you that had, had hurt you in some kind of a way, could we be friendly to that person? Could you be perfect and feed that person being perfect as your father which is in heaven? That is what Jesus said, you are the children of the king. Children of God. <coughs> now, as I said there, Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 says, Therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. I love that song, The Battle Hymn of the Republic. Mm -hmm. Or is it Onward Christian? Or in the I'm on Onward Christian Soldiers. No, we are Onward Christian Soldiers marching as to war. We're pressing against the gates of hell. Because why? Because there are people who are lost and dying and going to hell and that are your loved ones and your friends and they are going to die and burn for all eternity unless you get out there and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, a lot of people think it's in the, like they think it's up to the pastor or or the the, the you know the preachers come up the front ones that you know for those to go out and do all the witnessing and stuff. But it's not. Everyone is equal on the playing field. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. It is the great commandment. The great commandment isn't this. Get saved, sit in church, and do nothing but feed yourself about the spiritual food and do nothing with it. It is get saved and tell more people about the hope that is Jesus Christ. It's tell more people about the life that's now being that you have been made free from the law of sin and death. 
that you have been set at liberty. There's the thing, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We're out there to preach that. You want to tell people about things. Tell people about what your life was like. Your testimony. Share it with them. What you went through. And now what God's brought you out. He's brought you out to this side here. To make your life better. Okay. When you first get saved, the Holy Spirit comes. It's like he lifts you up on the cloud. I remember when I first got saved, it was like, I was like, did anyone else feel like that? <coughs> <coughs> and all of a sudden, like a child, you have to start learning to walk and stuff. And then you get a point, you get to grow up. And you need to be in the Word of God. So you can tell people about the hope. We have the best thing in the in Not just in the world, in the universe, in all heavens. Amen. We've got the best thing. We have... God himself dwelling within us. The almighty incarnate God, the Prince of Peace, is dwelling within your heart if you are a born again Bible believing Christian. You cannot say this, oh, I'm a Christian but I don't believe the word of God. Mm. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And this is my command, that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy strength. And other things says something a bit different. But basically it's saying that you give, you love God with all of you. And the second is like unto it, love thy neighbour as thyself. And then in another part in the word of God, he says, the name of Paul says it, no, Peter, I can't remember. But he says, they say, if you say you love God and yet you hate men, how can you say you love God? Is that John, is it? John. How can you say you love God? So if I have a hate, so to say, for instance, say if I hated Pastor Paul, I don't know, okay. if I hated Pastor Paul, and then I said, Mm. No, no, don't love you. Oh God. Well, I really love you. God looks down and he goes, you don't like yeah, it's someone who's created my image. So how can you say you love me? Oh. Mm. How can you say you love me if you can't love someone who's created in my image? You know, there's a, a guy in the Bible, <laughs> this, this is a, a man, that man is called Job. And he is a good example of someone that endured hardship and things. <coughs> you have seen the end of the Lord, the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. You know, Job, we all know the story of Job. I think everyone here knows the story of Job. If you don't know the story of Job, Job was a guy that basically what happened to start the Bible of the book of Job, sorry. So the book of Job, the sons of God presented themselves before the Lord God Almighty. The sons of God being the angels, because they are called, they are called the sons of God. We're the sons and daughters of God as well. Because God the Father is God the Father of all creation. And it's in everything spiritual and everything. And the devil presents himself there. The devil comes. And then God says to the devil, Have you considered my servant Job? But then the devil starts to do these things. And he starts to... And God allows the devil to test him. And he goes... And the devil's like... What you know, if we're I'm just paraphrasing this, you know, it's like words well, of these things. But basically, the devil goes to God, I'm going to make this guy fall. I'm going to make this guy, I'm going to show you that he is like, you think he's upright and righteous, you think he's good, like whatever you know, well, I'm, going to, I'm going to do these things, I'll take his this, take this, if I take this to this, do all these things, take his family away from him, take his house. Make his friends turn against him. 
he's going to hate you and despise you. <clears throat> but not in any of those things you endured so much stuff. Imagine, imagine if you lost your family. Imagine everyone else died except for you. And then you lost your house. And then you got ripped of sickness, but you couldn't die. You were so sick that you wanted to die, but you couldn't die. People don't think about the story of Job, but we go through a thing like this. Oh, he lost his family, lost his house, and I okay. But think about it in real life. Maybe you lost everything in your life, and you're so sick you wanted to die, but you weren't allowed to die. You're so everything to take away from you. In most other, who's ever been in other things where they call depression things or oppression? What is things? What sort of things? If you've been in oppression, isn't that? You can go down, imagine feeling that, but lost everything and still been getting hammered. And then in your heart's most, your utter lowest point of your, of your hurting, in your heart and your soul, is you're hurting there, God comes down and he says, out of the whirlwind, who is this that darkens the counsel by words without knowledge? Get up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures of thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched thy line upon it? God comes in the book of Job, in verse 38, sorry, chapter 38, and he gives the whole chapter 38 is God giving Job a dressing down. That's right. Have the gates of death been opened unto thee, or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Hast thou perceived the breadth of the earth, to care for no us at all? <coughs> <coughs> he says to him, Hast thou answered the treasures of snow, or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail, which I reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? Now after this, when the dust groweth into the hardness and clouds feet doth and now things, who provideth the raven his food when his young ones cry unto God, they wonder for lack of meat. Remember Jesus said that that God the Father feeds the ravens. And God the Father will always feed us. You're much more precious than ravens. You'll always, you'll not go without food. And if you know, if you go for the time, well, God's got a purpose for it. Now, after all these things have happened, in verse 40, chapter 42 <coughs> of Job, <coughs> Job 42, verse 10, and the Lord turned again, turned the captivity of, captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends, also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren and all his sisters, and they all had been of his acquaintance there before, that eat bread with him in his house. They bemoaned, bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job, more than his beginning, for he had fourteen thousand sheep and six thousand camels and thousands and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters, and he called the name of the first anyway the birds don't remember that part there. Those things. Anyway, and the end part here says, And after this lived Job in hundred and forty years, saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. Amen. So Job went through a really hard time. He went through a really hard time, but at the end of it, you see here, the Bible says, So the Lord blessed So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Our God is a merciful God. Amen. Psalm 51, 1, David says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Luke 1, 78 says, Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. Jesus Christ was that tender mercy. First Peter 3, 8, 1 First Peter chapter 3 and verse 8 says, Finally be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, being pitiful and courteous. Because in Deuteronomy, the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them. God is very merciful. And that is very intuitive in the word of God. Because remember when they, the, the children of Israel they went out and they did those things and they had the calves and that. I mean, God told Moses, he said, I'm going to destroy these people. But... He just expresses his anger at them. It's like when the child does something wrong and you go, I'm going to give you a smack. And then the child stops. Well, isn't God just saying to the children of Israel, I'm going to destroy you. Oh, but, but, but Moses, please for remember. No, God, don't do that. But God is, it's God who is the merciful one. Everyone looks at him and goes, oh, I, oh Moses changed the heart of God. No, God is merciful and pitiful. He is very tender mercies. But he will chastise you if you're his son or daughter. And as we say now is the time of grace, the time is to the salvation time for people to get saved and turn to God Almighty, just receive the free gift of Jesus Christ. And so we've got that preaching that free gift, the hope of salvation. Because we don't want to see people going to hell. And God doesn't want to see people going to hell. Because God's when the nun should perish, but all should come to repentance. <laughs> you have heard that hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbour and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth the rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Be perfect. Endure the hardships of life. Be a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Run the race. Train. Train by reading the Word of God, meditating upon the Word of God. I know it's like, oh, it's really hard, and I know. When you have a full time job, it is really hard to get into the Word of God. It is really super hard. So you need to do, you need to find ways to be able to do it. Like, whether it's even your way to work and listening to it in your car. A little bit is better than none. That's right. A little bit, even one, I know it's some old thing, but even one verse is better than none. It's not quite hard just to have that one verse. It's not hard. And it makes you grow. You'll grow in the grace and love of Jesus Christ. And the more you know this, the more you know how much God loves you. The more you know how much God loves you, the more you want to share with people how much God loves them. Because... I know if I had a child, I would find it very hard to give them up so that everyone in the book could get saved. Yeah, true. And that's why even Jesus at the time, he said, could this hour pass from me, if it be possible, Father? But not my will, but thine be done.
So remember this. We camp and happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job, have seen the end of the Lord. The Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Our God is a merciful God, full of love and mercy. And he wants to bring us a place here to share the gospel of Jesus, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with everyone. <coughs> I'll finish there. Our Father, John, heaven, Lord, we thank you and praise you, Father, for your word. God, I thank you for your holy God, a merciful, pitiful, and of tender mercy, Lord. Your righteous judgments are righteous. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. It sets us free from all of sin and death. It makes us free, Lord. You make us free. God, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Lord, I pray that we may let our light so shine before men that we may be glorified, that we may see our works, the good works which are wrought through the Holy Spirit of God, and that you may get all the glory and praise in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen.